God's power unto salvation. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, Romans 1, 16 and 17. The Apostle Paul states that he is proud, not ashamed of something. What is it? He says that it is that he is not ashamed of the gospel, good news of Christ. Why is Paul proud of the good news of Christ? For it is the power of God unto salvation. The good news of Jesus Christ is the only thing that is powerful enough for God to save a believing sinner. For it is, for it, the good news of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. To whom is the good news of Christ? God's power unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, every person who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ has been saved by God's matchless grace. Why is this good news? God's power unto salvation to every believer. How can an ungodly sinner be saved when he believes the gospel for therein? That is, the gospel of Christ is the righteousness of God revealed. Remember that the righteousness of God revealed in this gospel of Christ is the only thing that God can use to save a believing sinner. The righteousness, justice of God shown in the gospel of Christ is the only thing powerful enough to save everyone that believeth. Listen, as God says, we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin as it is written. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Romans 3, 9 through 12. How could we ever be saved by our righteousness? When God says there is none righteous, how could we ever be saved by our goodness? When God says there is none that doeth good, the scriptures say, hath concluded all under sin. Galatians 3.22 Since we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, and were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, 1 and 3 How could we ever stand before God in peace? We could not. God must punish sin. He says, There is no God beside me. A just God and a Savior. Isaiah 45.21 the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. If God had punished us, it would have taken us an eternity to pay the debt. But God brought us good news instead. God brought us the good news of Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ dying our death, therefore paying our debt, he provides righteous grounds upon which God can declare us right when we believe on him. For God's definition of this good news, here the Apostle Paul, he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, good news, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 3, and 4. Remember, God said that his righteousness is revealed in that gospel and that the gospel of Christ is that he died for our sins. Now the believer does not have to die for his sins. Why? Be for Christ died for our sins. For what the law of sin and death could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned, judged sin in the flesh that the righteousness, judicial requirement of the law, death for sin, might be fulfilled, ended in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8, 3 and 4. God has dealt with our sins according to his justice, a just God and a Savior. Isaiah 45, 21. He must punish sin with death. Romans 6, 23. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. Now, what is the believer standing before God? See, 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, good news, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Where does God say that we stand? He says that we stand in the gospel, which is how that Christ died for our sins, 
knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, Romans 6, 6. We stand in Christ's burial and his resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, 3, and 4, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Be it known unto you, therefore, that through this man, Christ Jesus, has preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified, declared right from all things, Acts, 6, Acts 13, 38, and 39. Now, what must I do to be saved? Quit doing, but to him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Romans 4, 5. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16, 31.